My name is Lars Vogel and I'm going to present this. What we are doing, of course, it's the work of many people. Um, in case you don't know me, I'm one of the Eclipse developers. I do love open source and I try to help as much as I can with the Eclipse project. And we also have a popular website with Android and Eclipse uh, related things. So um, in this talk, I focus on the foundation, which is used to build any Eclipse IDE, which you may be using. So it is called the Eclipse Top Level Project. The Eclipse Top Level Project is responsible uh, for building the Java tooling, but also the framework and any other uh, tooling can be built on top of it. Um, I will um, leave some room for questions. Um, I talk only about platform, but if you have later questions with any other part of the Eclipse idea, I'm happy to try to answer them. I will talk about four things in this presentation, and the first one is a little bit internal, which is typically not very interesting for Eclipse IDE users. And just for my understanding, we have a small audience here, and I know some are committers, so who here works um, by extending or working for Eclipse by sign of hands? So like one third or so, and the rest is in Eclipse IDE users, is that, is that true? Okay, so, so I hope I have something also for you. I also talk about what we're doing actually for the Eclipse extenders and also for users, and then also I have a separate point where we try, where to speak about what we're trying to improve usability. Like I said, I will have some room for questions. So if you have some proposals which we can improve, let me know or let us know. All right, um, so first of internal stuff. Um, if you look at our commit statistics, which we have in the last three months, um, that is the Eclipse top level project, I think uh, you see that it's relatively nice distributed here. Um, of course, IBM still does a lot of work, but we also have a lot of contributors coming in, not with any company associated people. We have Red Hat working on the Eclipse ID, we have our little company, the Vogella GmbH, and also Google does a lot of things. And I think this, this combination of individuals and companies makes for the charm, for me at least, uh, for the Eclipse IDE, because we have all these different areas where people work on performance, stability, enhancements, Eclipse-rich client platform, um, very nice. Huh? And some of the results will be presented here. As every year, the Eclipse project tries to recycle a little bit the code uh, base. I think that is something we always will continue doing, and it's one of the activities I personally enjoy a lot, because I always feel if we do this constantly, we open up the way for new people doing amazing work. Huh? So if we kick out our little white space issues, then people will come and see, ah, it's easy, yeah, to contribute to this uh, code base. And I think we see actually a result is a lot of people driving by and just providing a patch for their special need. Huh? This is a uh, increased version of what we have seen earlier, and you see that even though some people contribute a lot to the project, you also have lots of people which just contribute one or two patches just to fix their individual need. Yeah? Very nice. And I think this is one of the results of cleaning up the code base um, and making it easier to contribute. Um, we, of course, do a lot of bug hunting. This is actually a slide from yesterday. It was used in the UrKit profiling talk where Carsten Tomes identified a memory issue. It basically, there was string allocation. Um, during this talk, someone in the audience opened the bug, and someone in Germany, um, and Andrei Loskutov, fixed it, I think, within an hour or so. It's a relatively trivial fix, but it will solve this memory issue. And of course, this is just one little tiny fix, but um, this code cleanup actually results in hundreds of thousands of these little fixes. And as a result, the IDE becomes more stable, faster, more efficient, and so on and so on. Huh? So I, I love these fixes. It's relatively trivial, but reduces garbage collection quite significantly. Um, but we're not only cleaning up, of course, things. We also would like to make it easier for our um, extenders to build on top of the Eclipse platform. So, for example, we also um, introducing Lambda in our API. Of course, we have some legacy within Eclipse. Uh, we have interfaces with more, more than one method. So, we building factory methods just to allow people also to use Lambda, Lambdas. Um, we also um, reorganized the code bases of Eclipse four years ago significantly. And we introduced dependency injection as example, a service, service architecture. But as we are the Eclipse platform, we're also supporting the existing and old API. 
And this was not using dependency injection, so we open it up soon, um, step by step, also for Eclipse Extender to not have to use any factories or singletons and just use add inject and get these objects injected if they're handled by the, by the workbench Eclipse, by the Eclipse workbench. Um, maybe a little bit specific for most of you, but we also support uh, supporting OSGI declarative service 1.3. Thomas Watson, also sitting in the audience, integrated Felix for that into Equinox, and someone else implemented, Peter Nera implemented the support for using this. And if you have no idea what this is, it's basically you have an annotation, and this annotation leads to the fact that there will be later a service registered, and that service can be used in your application, for example, via dependency injection, and uh, it's really nice to use. Red Hat is working or, or worked on a way of building easier support for new editors. The, the old way of building an editor was you create a class, you, you register it for a certain file extension, you build all the infrastructure yourself. Um, of course, the world is getting faster and it should be easier to, to build such a thing. So we now have this generic editor support. It is an extendable editor where you can register a little bit and then you have support for a new language. As an example, um, if you write this code here on the slide, and uh, it didn't fit on the slide, but you add, I think, six lines of XML and maybe 20 additional lines of listing the keywords which should be highlighted, then you end up with a Gradle editor with syntax highlighting, at least. Yeah, and that is comparable easy um, to the old way of building a Gradle editor. Huh? And of course, then you can do more sufficient things like code completion and so on. Very nice, the Red Hat team also works on TextMate support for this editor, and we're also planning to, as far as I know, um, we're also planning to build in uh, language, servers, uh, language server protocol support for this. I'm not sure if you have went to any of these sessions which spoke about language server protocol, but basically it's a protocol which allows you to integrate any programming language in an editor, speaking a standard defined, I think, by Microsoft. Um, very nice, so you get basically support for PHP um, in your editor without doing anything. Well, and we also planning to have this, of course, in Eclipse. Um, so that's more internal, so things you as user may enjoy are uh, that we have enabled background operations uh, by default. Um, this is actually done by me, working, I think, a few weeks um, on an Android project with Android Studio, and I returned to Eclipse land, and I was so fed up with all these dialogues popping in my face. Um, Android Studio has a nice way of hiding certain uh, performance issues by putting in a dialogue into your face, and then it hides this dialogue and comes up, brings up a ni nice new dialogue. And I was so happy to start again with Eclipse, and then I, I got immediately this dialogue, um, I'm doing something which could also be run in background. So my super minor development, we just changed the preference after a few weeks of discussion, and um, now everything runs in background. And I think as users, you will, this will be pretty much notable for you because it feels like everything just works in the back, uh, like immediately. Um, building on that or building on parallel, several people have contributed to an improvement of the Jobs API. Jobs API are now much faster, even if the uh, person who or using this Jobs API did not do the correct thing. So if you report a status update every, every milliseconds, we're just caching that and waiting until 16 milliseconds to do the next UI update. Um, we also have now API which are also always cancelable. So if this API is used, then you can just press cancel and this backup operation will be cancelled. Um, and we should get a way of these uh, things where you press cancel in Eclipse and it just never cancels until the very end. Um, we also moving to an asynchronous layouting. Um, that is actually something which is very common in Android development. Uh, in Android you basically only mark things um, for layouting and then, let me just open it, and then if you, if you mark it, it basically the render will at some point say, okay, I'm redrawing it. If you do synchronous layouting, it can be that the UI event's queuing up and the UI is still reacting while you're not doing anything anymore. Huh? We see the result here. You scrolled a bit and it continues to scroll. Um, asynchronous layouting is so much nicer because um, 
it only draws it once in a while when the next frame has to be rendered. So it basically is stable. You scroll and it will be rendering operation will of course happen, but it just will not lag that much anymore. If you still continue, it basically stops once you stop with the mouse. Much nicer. We also offer asynchronous comp code completion. Um, it's more or less a drop-in replacement if your um, completion provider does not access the main thread. Um, you can just put it into outside of the main thread. Very nice, uh, also done by Red Hat, um, also used already by the generic editor. We're also improving styling. Um, there was some UI glitches which were actually unnoticed, at least by, by several people uh, in, the, in the development community uh, for years. So if you see this red little thing, there was an inconsistency toolbar, and that is not bad. Huh? It's, it's just a little bit annoying, and, and we're trying to fix this. On Mac, we had a little P line. So there was, I noticed that on a Macintosh, there is a little yellow line in the toolbar, and nobody knows why it's there. I guess it was there for testing, and, and, that, and these things, of course, also have been removed. We're also constantly improving our dark theme. Um, we um, have now also stylable buttons under Windows, which was not the case before. So you can have also nice buttons um, in Windows. We recently added um, styling for table headers under Windows and Linux. So these can also be nicer in the dark theme if you prefer with your dark theme. Who's using actually the dark theme? Not necessarily in Eclipse, but in general. Okay, okay so half of the audience uh, uses the dark theme and it should be nicer now. Um, of course, there's a lot of work ongoing in the JDT team to support um, Java 9 and JUnit 5. Um, there were special talks for this, or are special talks for this, so I'm not going to cover this, uh, but it's available now. You can use it. You can start Eclipse with Java 9. You can also develop for Java 9. Um, it's not included in the latest builds, for some legal reasons, but there's a wiki page which you then follow. You can just use it. JUnit 5 is the same. If you have questions to JUnit 5, no poor, maybe raise your hand. It's the main developer for this, so you can ask questions to her. She had also a nice talk. You can go in the past and try to see it. Um, and also, also nice things, like if um, one of my favorite features in Eclipse is you press control and you go to a certain implementation and you can go to the super uh, implementation of that. And that didn't work for interfaces, and, and now it works for interfaces. Um, a nice thing, which I think is available since a long time in IntelliJ, is that the debugger shows you the last return value of, of, of a the return value of the last called method. So you don't have, for debugging purpose, you don't have to assign a result of a method to a variable to see it in the debugger. You just, yeah, very nice. And I think also, Nopo, did you do that? Okay, sorry, okay. Um, some Google developers work on a new index. Um, Google um, has very big workspaces, as I have heard. 50 million classes, I think it was said. And they see certain performance issues, especially with accessing the type hierarchy or any Java element or, or Java files. Uh, because the way the old index was implemented, it, it sometimes needed to go anyway in the jar files, and if you have lots of jar files, that takes long. The promise is that this, once this is finished, it, um, average Java operations will be 10, oh, 1,000 times faster, which is a pretty impressive number. We're not there yet. Um, then at the moment, we are sometimes slower and sometimes significantly faster, but um, Stefan Zenos from Google is, is very hot working on this, and we hope that this will, this will be improved. And um, I'm actually looking really forward to this, because we have also several customers which have these huge workspaces, and sometimes open type is very slow, and it would be nice to have this much, much faster. All right. Um, we are, of course, trying to improve usability. Um, let's have a look. I think that is the old one. Um, usability is a big topic, I think. Um, um, especially competition, of course, makes it also relatively usable as much. Um, so, for example, and this is my favorite thing of usability back in Eclipse, is um, if I want to restart Eclipse, I obviously have to look for a menu entry after print, <laughs> but before the import. Yeah? So, 
I think that is not, we can all agree that is not the best place to put the restart menu. So in, in the next release, um, we, we have it moved, of course, here and also switch workspace. We have also kicked out menu entries, which we thought nobody uses. Um, so it should be a little bit uh, slimmer here. We also trying to make the usage of Eclipse um, as efficient as possible. So if we have a dialogue and we expect you to select a lot of elements, I think a logical implementation actually gives you a filter box. Huh? So the bottom is new, so you have a filter box instead of like going through this selection again and again. Um, I think it's a theme we would, everything which has a big collection of data, we would like to give you a filter for that. We also relabeling um, our dialogues so that it's um, not cancel OK anymore, but then cancel and then a description of what will happen if you press this button. Um, it's actually something I learned like six months ago that this is um, something which you should do. And ever since I see such a dialogue, I get Ugh, and it's, it's really easy to change this. So we are in process um, of, of changing like the majority of the dialogues we control, um, so that it's just a nicer look and feel. And again, nothing big, that's why it's in, in the usability thing. One thing I would really like to see is um, an improved debug perspective. Um, who here likes the existing debug perspective of Eclipse? Okay, one person who, some say, one person came in but he didn't catch the question, so do you count, and who does not like it? Okay. okay, I think I, I'm very, everyone didn't like it. Uh, that's a fair summary. You know, a, a few actually liked it, but um, it can be improved because the default one has just a very tiny space to, to look at the code, and we, hopefully this goes through. There's still, of course, a political change involved in that. Um, yeah, and there, there are little, little more small things which I think I don't want to cover here. Um, so in summary, we're trying to do our best to improve performance. We, of course, try to improve usability. We also um, build API, which is efficiently, which is nice to use, hopefully. And as end result, I think the whole experience with Eclipse should be better and still, of course, should be the fastest ID out there. Um, one thing I wanted to show you before I go to the question, if you have questions, yes. It's a nice thing, which I uh, think is pretty nice. So what do you notice about this Eclipse IDE? I mean, just maybe play around with it. Uh, let's say a new Java project. And then testing or something like that. Anything you notice about it? Okay. It's actually Eclipse in the running in the browser. It's, um, I find this pretty amazing. It's a work of a Red Hat team. Um, Red Hat has ported um, the SWT implementation under Linux to Wayland, so it removes all X11 calls, and that enables you to run any Eclipse-based application, including rich client platform and the IDE in a browser. You just basically um, start it up, so let me just stop this. I stop the server. So basically, start up a server, which is available under Linux. Now this runs and can render any uh, of these applications in the browser. And then you um, start with a certain command. You're not allowed yet to use the launcher. You start it, and then um, Eclipse will be running on the specified port. Yeah. And that's the default now. You can have multiple windows. You can actually use it. I find it actually even faster than the native uh, implementation. I was a little bit surprised yesterday about that. Um, fully functional. Um, and um, there's a lot of interest, actually, in the rich client pl platform community. This is a desktop application based on the Eclipse framework. No change required. It just runs in the browser um, with just a few commands. Um, very, very nice, I think. And you can actually also combine it with a, with a Docker container in front of it. So you would have like a web page where if someone logs in, you start up a Docker container, uh, and he gets his own port, and you do port forwarding. So you could just have a deployment in the cloud with your favorite IDE, uh, one of 
the things are really nice. And actually, I noticed yesterday it's, it's for me, at least faster running in the browser. So uh, I might switch to a web um, IDE. But having said that, um, that's what I wanted to tell you. Do you have any question? Anything you particularly dislike about Eclipse, which you would like to see improved? Not necessarily in platform, but any, everything, every, anywhere else. I mean, actually, like the screenshot. So the question was, how would the improved debug perspective look like? And I, I, I personally, my, and that was on the screenshot, um, was uh, give some room for the code. The current debug perspective on an average resolution on a monitor has maybe 20% for the code. And now, if that would be accepted, what, or maybe an improved version, you would have let's say 60, 70% of the code, then you have a console on, on the button, and then you have the views you need for debugging, like variables or stack trace on the right side. Um, an alternative solution would be to integrate the debug experience in the normal perspective, like, like IntelliJ does this. Um, actually, a lot of committers using this approach in Eclipse, but that's not, not the scope of this development. We would just, an out-of-box experience should be nicer. And of course, then you can customize it to your liking still. Uh, we're not taking that away. But it's just some, something we noticed that a lot of Eclipse users uh, just use Eclipse as is. And it's sometimes I feel painfully uh, touched if I, you see an Eclipse user looking in this little window and trying to scroll and find the right, right data to look at it. Uh, yeah. All right. We have, a, we have a second question now. I used the microphone last. Uh, our, our project has um, thousands of bundles, and um, every time a developer changes the manifest, they have to wait for a minute to two minutes for the whole thing to resolve. Will this Google contribution that you mentioned help with things like that, with the indexing, or is it, is it not going to help? Um, what, uh, maybe you should stand there, what is actually doing, what, what's blocking? So it's recompiling, or? Yeah, it's waiting to resolve those manifest changes because you've made a new dependency, and then it goes off and uh, it's got thousands of bundles to figure out where the dependency is, and the whole tree is just taking ages to resolve. Um, yeah. So, so the question, we can have a discussion later, but I think the question is, I don't know. I, I don't know why it occurs. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you just, um, if you run a stack trace or like you trace it and see where the performance issue is, then uh, it could be in so many places. But um, if the index is involved, the Java index, then of course it will, will be faster. But if it's anything else, like, like Tom pointed out, then of course we need to f f fix the other issue then. Oh. Thank you also. So maybe one last question before I fly back to Hamburg. Right, no questions, I think. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Mm -hmm.